Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to another video. And this is a reaction to the real reason Putin is preparing for war in the Ukraine. Um, obviously, we know what's happening. I mean, to a, to a certain degree, I don't know much about it. I just know Russia is sort of planning to invade Ukraine, I, th I think. Or they're moving their troops to the borders in the idea that they're gonna they're gonna um invade ukraine but i don't really know i don't follow the news for many reasons because i don't like seeing all this shit that goes on to be honest but this is a really real thing like it's happening as i do this reaction pretty much so it's like an ongoing thing and this was a few days ago so it might have been updated since but we're gonna learn about it hopefully going to enjoy it. it's from johnny harris as well and i do enjoy his videos some people like the reactions to him some people don't if it's not for you don't have to watch but i do enjoy his videos I'm just going to get into that, into this. I have a feeling this might be to do with, like, maybe the fact that Russia used to be so much bigger. Like, it was the Soviet Union. Like, it had all these other countries that are now individual countries um, that are part of the Soviet Union. And maybe they're trying to sort of gain it back. I feel like there's always things with Russia trying to do that. But I don't actually know. That's just sort of my guess going into this. Oh, man. Um, before we do get into this, links are in the description to my Patreon. Lots of exclusive reactions there. Same for my new channel. Um, links are there too if you're interested in different style, styles of content and yeah, just all that kind of stuff. But we're going to jump into this. Hopefully, going to enjoy. And let's get this check out. Russian invasion of Ukraine. Momentum is building for a war between Ukraine and Russia. Tensions between Russia and the West are growing rapidly. President Biden considering deploying thousands of troops to Eastern Europe. There are now 100,000 troops on the eastern border of Ukraine. Russia is setting up field hospitals on this border. Like, this is what preparation for war looks like. Field hospitals? Oh, no. So they're really, really, really preparing for it then. They're setting up like temporary hospitals to, I guess, to help their soldiers if they get injured or whatever. Oh man. Oh, that's not what I want to hear. Like this is what preparation for war looks like, a legitimate war. Ukrainian troops are watching and waiting, saying they are preparing for a fight. The US has ordered the families of embassy staff to leave Ukraine. Britain has sent all of their non-essential staff home. And Jeez. now the US is sending tons of weapons and munitions to Ukraine's army. And we're even considering deploying our own troops to the region. I mean, this thing is heating up. Meanwhile, Russia and the West have been in Geneva and Brussels trying to talk it out and sort of getting nowhere. The message is very clear. Should Russia take further aggressive actions against Ukraine, the costs will be severe and the consequences serious. It's a scary, grim momentum that is unpredictable and the chances of miscalculation and escalation are growing. I want to explain what's going on here, but I want to show you that this isn't just typical geopolitical behavior, stuff that can just be explained on the map. Instead, to understand why 100,000 troops are camped out on Ukraine's eastern border, ready for war, you have to understand Russia and how it's been cut down over the ages from a Slavic okay. empire that so kind of dominated what this whole region to then the Soviet Union, which was defeated in the 90s. And what you really have to understand here is how that history is transposed onto the brain of one man, this guy, Vladimir Putin. This is a story about regional domination and struggles between big powers, but really, it's the story about what Vladimir Putin really wants. Russian troops moving swiftly to take control of military bases in Crimea. Russia is advancing more than 100,000 troops in Iran military hardware at the border with Ukraine. Oh, so who edits these videos? Does he edit them as well? Surely not, because the editing is nuts. Before we go any further, I want to say thank you to today's sponsor, which is BetterHelp. Getting his Better money. I'm going to skip over, but shout out to him, man. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, of course, links are in the description to his video. Getting his money. You love to see it. He deserves it. That's happening. My channel for supporting this work. Let's dive back in. Okay, let's get up Can't to speed on what's happening here. And I'm just gonna quickly give you the highlight version of like the news that's happening because I wanna get into the juicy part, which is like why, the roots of all of this. So let's go. 
A few months ago, Russia started sending more and more troops to this border. It's this massive border between Ukraine and Russia. They said they were doing a military exercise, but the rest of the world was like, yeah, I totally believe you, <laughs> Russia. <laughs> this was right before this big meeting where North American and European countries were coming together to talk about a lot of different things like these countries often do in these diplomatic summits. But soon, because of Russia's aggressive behavior coming in and setting up 100,000 troops on the border with Ukraine, the entire summit turned into a whole WTF Russia, what are you doing on the border of Ukraine meeting. Before the meeting, Putin comes out and says, listen, I have some demands for the West. And everyone's like, uh, okay, Russia, what are your demands? You know, we have like COVID-19 right now and like that's like surging. So like, we don't need your like bluster about what your demands are. And Putin's like, no, here's my list of demands. Putin's demands for the summit were this. Number one, that NATO, which is this big military alliance between US, Canada, and Europe, stop expanding, meaning they don't let any new members in, okay? So, so Russia's like, no more new members to your like cool military club that I don't like. You can't have any more members. Number two, that NATO withdraw all of their troops from anywhere in Eastern Europe. Basically Putin- so he wants them to move well that's obvious what you want to do then how is this sort of, how are you giving these sort of these um you know you're asking for other countries to do this like what, what do you expect do you expect them to just agree and like follow the what you want not the whole world doesn't run by putin's fucking ideologies man like why does he get it through his head i can veto any military cooperation or troops going between countries that have to do with Eastern Europe, the place that used to be the Soviet Union, okay? And number oh, three, damn. Putin demands that America vow not to protect its allies in Eastern Europe with nuclear weapons. LOL, said all of the other countries. You're <laughs> literally nuts, Vladimir Putin. Like, these are the most ridiculous demands ever. But there he is, Putin, with these demands, these very, very aggressive demands. And he sort of is implying that if his demands aren't met, he's going to invade Ukraine. I mean, it doesn't work like this. This is not how international relations work. You don't just show up and say like, you, I'm not gonna allow other countries to join your- You do this or you get invaded. <laughs> God damn. I know he's a very, very powerful man, but who the hell does he think he is to think he can control what other countries do? Small man syndrome. I don't know what it is, but he's just, He's got this thing about him where he's just, he's got this aura about himself where he thinks he can just decide everything about the world, man. Your alliance, because it makes me feel uncomfortable. But what I love about this list of demands from Vladimir Putin for this summit is that it gives us a clue on what Vladimir Putin really wants, what he's after here. You read them closely and you can grasp his intentions. But to grasp those he intentions, you have to understand what NATO much. is and what Russia and Ukraine used to be. Okay, so a while back I made this video about why Russia is so damn big, where I explain how modern day Russia started here in Kiev, which is actually modern day Ukraine. In other words, modern oh, day wow. Russia, as we know it, has its original roots started in Ukraine. Ukraine. These places grew up together and they eventually became a part of the same mega empire called the Soviet Union. They were deeply intertwined, not just in their history, and their culture, but also in their economy and their politics. So it's after World War II, it's like the 50s, 60s, 70s, and NATO was formed, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This was a military alliance between all of these countries that was meant to sort of deter the Soviet Union from expanding and taking over the world. But as we all know, the Soviet Union which was Russia and all of these other countries, collapsed in 1991. And all of these Soviet republics, including Ukraine, became independent, meaning they were not now a part of one big block of countries anymore. But just because the borders all split up, it doesn't mean that these cultural ties actually broke. Like, mm -hmm. for example, the Soviet leader at the time of the collapse of the Soviet Union, this guy, Gorbachev, he was the son of a Ukrainian mother and a Russian father. Like he grew up with his mother singing him Ukrainian folk songs. In his mind, Ukraine and Russia were like one thing. So there was major reluctance to accept Ukraine as that. a separate thing. Like there is definitely like a lot of things that Ukraine and Russia do share, a lot of cultural things. But then I feel like Ukraine's sort of like 
shares certain things, but then they also do things that other countries do. Sort of maybe, I mean, maybe more Western countries. Like Russia has these ideologies. I feel like Ukraine's a bit more. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I know Ukraine's more like well run. I'm going to just say well run because I think the Western way is the better way, obviously. I'm not going to get political. I'm trying not to get political. It's quite hard when it's a political video, so I don't really know if that's possible. But I can sort of see, like, in terms of like people and families, that like, there must be a lot of Ukrainian families or Ukrainian and Russian families, sort of like you got a Ukrainian mum, Russian dad kind of thing. So I do see that, but at the same time, like, you get that with, like, other countries, like, it's just, I don't know, but I do, I do see what he's saying. Russia, in so many ways, they are one. There was another Russian at the time who did not accept this new division. This young intelligence officer, Vladimir Putin, who was starting to rise up in the ranks of post-Soviet Russia. There's this amazing quote from 2005 where Putin is giving the State of the Union like address where Putin declares the collapse of the Soviet Union, quote, the greatest catastrophe of the 20th century. And that's for the Russian people. Of the 20th century? <laughs> is this guy mad? Does he know what happened in the 20th century? Oh, well, no. Genuine the bias, man. Tens of millions of fellow citizens and countrymen found themselves beyond the fringes of Russian territory. Do you see how he frames this? The Soviet Union were all one people in his mind. And after it collapsed, all of these people who were a part of the motherland were now outside of the fringes or the boundaries of Russian territory. First off, fact check. Greatest catastrophe of the 20th century. Like, do you remember what else happened in the 20th century, <laughs> Vladimir? Not that much, was it? <laughs> Putin's worry about the collapse of this one people starts to get way worse when the West, his enemy, starts showing up to his neighborhood to all these ex-Soviet countries that are now independent. The West starts selling their ideology of democracy and capitalism and inviting them to join their military alliance called NATO. And guess what? These countries are totally buying it. All these ex-Soviet countries Join are now joining Join NATO, and some of them, the EU. And Putin is hating this. He's <laughs> like, not only did the Soviet Union divide and all of these people are now outside of the Russia motherland, but now they're being persuaded by the West to join their military alliance. This is terrible news. Over the years, this continues to, to happen, while Putin himself starts to chip away at Russian institutions, making them weaker and weaker. He's silencing his rivals and he's consolidating power in himself. I do feel bad for Russian people because I feel like he's the voice of Russia, but there's so many people from Russia who would just not agree with any of the stuff that he does, but they can't share their voice or he'll jail you. He'll do this, do this, do that to your family. Like it's just, it's a very shitty situation. Because, like, we sort of view Russia as this country that's all bad. But it's the political part of Russia that's this whole bad thing. The people, have, they have, they're out of control. It's just a shitty situation. But politically, Russia is a... I don't want to get... I don't want to get as political, bit political, but in terms of Russia, like, politically, it's just... Yeah, it's, it's a mess. I mean, it's not a mess, but it's just... It's not good. Which is... Oh, I don't know what and I'm saying. And in the past few years... He's effectively silenced anyone who can challenge him. Any institution, any that journalist, or any political rival have all been silenced. Remember this? The one who was poisoned got sent to it's prison. It's been decades since the Soviet Union fell. But as Putin gains more power, he still sees the region through the lens of the old Cold War, Soviet, Slavic Empire view. He sees this region as one big block that has been torn apart by outside forces the greatest catastrophe of the 20th century. And the worst situation of all of these, according to Putin, is Ukraine, which was like the gem of the Soviet Union. There was tons of cultural heritage. Again, Russia sort of started in Ukraine, not to mention it was a very populous and industrious, resource-rich place. And over the years, Ukraine has been drifting west. It hasn't joined NATO yet, but more and more it's been electing pro-Western presidents. It's been flirting with membership in NATO. Okay. It's becoming less and less attached to the Russian heritage that Putin so adores. 
and more than half of Ukrainians say that they'd be down to join the EU. 64% more than British of them people. say that they'd be cool joining NATO. Holy but Putin sh can't handle this. He is in total denial. Like an ex-boyfriend who can't handle his ex-girlfriend starting to date someone else, Putin can't let Ukraine go. He won't let go. So for the past decade, he's been trying to keep the West out and bring Ukraine back into the motherland of Russia. This usually takes the form of Putin sending secret soldiers from Russia into Ukraine to help the people in Ukraine who want to like separate from Ukraine and join Russia. It also takes the form of, oh yeah, stealing entire parts of Ukraine for Russia. Russian troops moving swiftly to take control of military bases Crimea, in Crimea. Right? Like in 2014, Putin just did this. What America is officially calling a Russian invasion of Ukraine. He is Crimea just... still, because obviously, I don't know, they, they invaded it. Is Crimea still invaded? I swear I always hear about it, but I don't really know. Is Crimea... Okay, so it's a very unsafe. I knew it was quite unsafe, to be fair. Religion... <laughs> I just want to see Crimea as a, like an area. What cities are there? Like it's like Donet Donetsk or however you say it. Maps. So it's here. Don't know this place. I'm trying to sort of think of like football teams that I know to see if they're like. So Dnipro, Donetsk. So it's not. But it's quite close to um, where my girlfriend's from. God damn. It is. It's very close to Romania. Even if not connected. Jeez. God damn. I love geography. I could just look at maps all day long. Snatched this bit of Ukraine and folded it into Russia. So you're starting to see what's going on here. Putin's life's work is to salvage what he calls the greatest catastrophe of the 20th century, the division and the separation of the Soviet republics from Russia. So let's get to present day, it's 2022. Putin is at it again. And honestly, if you really wanna understand the mind of Vladimir Putin and his whole view on this, you have to read this. On the History of Unity of Russians and Ukrainians by Vladimir Putin, a blog post that kind of sounds like a ninth grade history essay. In this essay, Vladimir Putin argues that Russia and Ukraine are one people. He calls them essentially the same historical and spiritual space. Kind of beautiful writing, honestly. Anyway, he argues that the division between the two countries is due to, quote, a deliberate effort by those forces that have always sought to undermine our unity. And that the formula they use, these outside forces, is a classic one, divide and rule. And then he launches into this super in-depth, like 10 page argument as to every single historical beat of Ukraine and Russia's history to make this argument that like this is one people and the division is totally because of outside powers, i.e. the West. But like you say this and I, I see like the words he says, fair enough, I can, I mean I can't, I don't agree but his point of view it is what it is. But then if you're talking about how you're so similar and how like you share spirit, how like spiritually you're the same, like same sort of people. You want to just invade, which would probably lead to many Ukrainians dying. Like how, how does this even make sense? Like it's just, it's so like flawed. Like he says this probably to like make people in Russia and maybe a few, like maybe some some people in Ukraine who agree with it, sort of be like, yeah, do this, do this. But like, it's just it's very strange because you're, you're invading a country which would lead to the loss of life, lo lots of lives being lost of Ukrainians and of Russians like if you really cared I don't think you'd it's just it's just weird okay, man. You listen, do that. there's this moment at the end of the post that actually kind of hit me in a big way he says this just have a look at Austria and Germany or the US and Canada how they live next to each other close in ethnic composition culture and in fact sharing one language 
They remain sovereign states with their own interests, with their own foreign policy, but this does not prevent them from the closest integration or allied relations. They have very conditional, transparent borders, and when crossing them, citizens feel at home. They create families, study, work, do business. Incidentally, so do millions of those born in Ukraine who now live in Russia. We see them as our own close people. I mean, it's a good listen, pitch. Like, I, I'm not in support of what Putin is doing, but like that, that's like a pretty solid like analogy. If China suddenly showed up and started like coaxing Canada into being a part of its alliance, I would be a little bit like, what's going on here? That's what Putin feels, and so I kind of with the U.S. and Ukraine, means or like a deep with NATO and Ukraine, connection between these people, and he's seen that falter and dissolve, and he doesn't like it. He clearly, genuinely feels a brotherhood and this deep heritage connection with the people of Ukraine. Okay, 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 okay. I think it's sort of his perception. He sort of thinks it's the U.S. and Ukraine, or the U.S. But it's like the Western world, because he seems to have such a hatred for, obviously, the Western world, but especially the US. So he probably views it as deep down it's the US trying to sort of get one back on Russia, when I think in reality, it's just Ukraine sort of... Because at the end of the day, the Western world isn't forcing anything upon like Ukraine, from my knowledge. It's just sort of like giving them the freedom to decide what they want to do, and then... Ukraine themselves will decide, and Russia sort of like, hold on, we don't want this. We want you to be under sort of our sort of um, political situation or political um, system. But like, it's just, it's just like, I guess Russia see it as, oh, it's the US trying to interfere, or it's the UK trying to interfere. When it's, it's just, it's just their decision. But they see it like that. I get it. You're and because they're protecting Ukraine. Like NATO are protecting the Ukraine, they probably hate it even they more. It is compelling there at the end. You're clearly very smart. He sold well, it to right? me nearly, but this but... does not justify what you've been up <laughs> I'm to. Joking. Okay, it doesn't justify sending a hundred thousand troops to the yeah, border. Yeah, you say all that, or and then sending you cyber soldiers to sabotage to the Ukrainian government, or annexing territory, fueling a conflict that has killed tens of thousands of people in eastern Ukraine. No, mm. okay? No matter how much affection you feel for Ukrainian heritage and its connection to Russia, this is them. not okay. Again, it's like the boyfriend who genuinely loves his girlfriend. They had a great relationship, but they broke up, and she's free to see whomever she wants. But Putin is not ready to let go. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? I love you, Jessica. What the hell is wrong with you? Dude, don't fucking touch me. I love you, dude. World star! Putin has constructed his own reality here, one in which Ukraine is actually being controlled by shadowy Western forces who are holding the people of Ukraine hostage. And if that he invades, it'll be a swift that's, victory because Ukrainians will accept him with open arms. That's what I'm saying, man. He thinks it's like the Western world in control. It's not, man. They're just leaving it to their own devices, letting them decide what's next for the country. If they want to join, they want to join. And they probably see it quite as quite an appealing thing, which is why they're considering joining, like, NATO and the European Union, etc. Because it's it's a much more, like... Well, it's just a fairer way of life. Like, people are tr treated how they should be, etc. A great liberator. Equals is not... not like, this guy's a total like. romantic. He's a history buff and a romantic, and he has a hill to die on here and it is liberating the people who have been taken from the Russian motherland. Kind of like the abusive boyfriend who's like, she actually really loves me, but it's her annoying friends who are planting all these ideas in her head. That's why she broke up with me. And it's like, no, dude, that she's she's over you. I what know. the hell's wrong I with you? I love you, Jessica. I mean, maybe this video should be called Putin is just like your abusive ex-boyfriend. What the hell's wrong with you? I love you, Jessica. What the Okay, so where does this leave us? <laughs> it's 2022. Putin is showing up to these meetings in Europe to tell them where he stands. He says, NATO, you cannot expand anymore. No new members, and you need to withdraw all your troops from Eastern Europe, my neighborhood. He knows these demands will never be accepted because they're ludicrous, but what he's doing is 
showing a false effort to say, well, we tried to negotiate with the West, but they didn't want to. Hence, mm. giving a little bit more justification to a Russian invasion. So, will Russia invade? Is there war coming? Maybe. It's impossible to know because it's all inside of the head of this guy. But, if I were to make the best argument that war is not coming tomorrow, I would look at a few things. Number one, war in Ukraine would be incredibly costly for Vladimir Putin. Russia has a far superior army to Ukraine's, but still Ukraine has a very good army that is supported by the West and would give Putin a pretty bad bloody nose in any invasion. Controlling territory in Ukraine would be very hard. Ukraine is a giant country. They would fight back and it would be very hard to actually conquer and take over territory. Another major point here is that if Russia invades Ukraine, this gives NATO new purpose. If you remember, NATO was created because of the Cold War, because the Soviet Union was big in nuclear power. Once the Soviet Union fell, NATO sort of has been looking for a new purpose over the past couple decades. If Russia invades Ukraine, NATO suddenly has a brand new purpose to unite and yeah, to invest Russia, that part of in becoming purpose, more powerful than ever. Putin knows that, and it would be very bad news for him if that happened. But most importantly, perhaps the easiest clue for me to believe that war isn't coming tomorrow is the Russian propaganda machine is not preparing the Russian people for an invasion. In 2014, when Russia was about to invade and take over Crimea, this part of Ukraine, there was a barrage of state propaganda that prepared the Russian people. That oh no, so literally as soon as he's recorded this, it's changed. Oh man. This was a justified attack. So when it happened, it wasn't a surprise and it felt very normal. That isn't happening right now in Russia. At least for now, it, it may start happening tomorrow. <laughs> but for now, I think Putin is showing up to the border, flexing his muscles, and showing the West that he is earnest. I'm not sure that he's going to invade tomorrow, but he very well could. I mean, read the guy's blog post, and you'll realize that he is a romantic about this. He is incredibly idealistic about the glory off, <laughs> days of the Slavic empires, and he wants to get it back. So, there is dangerous momentum towards war. And the way war works is Please, even a no. small little, like, fight can turn into the other guy doing something bigger and crazier, and then the other person has to respond with something a little bit more, bigger. Bit more, That's called more, escalation. Yeah. And there's not really a ceiling to how much that momentum can spin out of control. That is why it's so scary when two nuclear countries go to war with each other, because there's kind of no ceiling. So yeah, it's dangerous. This is scary. I'm not sure what happens next here, but the best we can do is keep an eye on this. At least for now, we better understand what Putin really wants out of all of this. Thanks for watching. God damn. With this, I do wonder like, um, what's the general sort of opinion from Russians and the general opinion from Ukrainians? Like, obviously this is Putin, but like, he, he doesn't actually, like, stand for like, what I feel like the majority of Russians actually believe. Which is quite sad, to be honest. But, yeah, if you're from Russia or if you're from Ukraine and you have an opinion on this, let me know because it would be interesting to see how you view this situation. But, I mean, yeah, this is the reaction. It's quite, quite a mess. Hopefully it doesn't lead to war because, I mean, no one wants that. But just we'll just have to see what happened, obviously. This was, like, three days ago. So maybe it's change and more there's more like things that have been happening since but fingers crossed but hopefully you did enjoy this one if you want more reactions from johnny harris or other sort of channels like this let me know in the comments and until next time like subscribe peace